Hello and welcome to an FPGA vision video. In this video, we will have a complete introduction on the design flow for machine learning on FPGA. This is information that is distributed over several other videos. And uh, in discussion in emails are found that it is better to have one a bit longer video to explain all the different steps in one place. So you are assumed to have a certain knowledge of FPGAs, of FPGA development, but still uh, it's a good idea to have this video. We'll have several chapters to show you the different steps from installing the software with uh, downloading the code, training for machine learning, then we will have simulation, FPGA synthesis and use of the remote lab. And as an example, we take the machine learning uh, project from uh, this available on GitHub and uh, perform this now uh, yeah, from start to end. So if you are already an expert, maybe you want to check only several things of this video. If you are new to FPGAs or have been doing have been using different tools maybe uh, the complete video is of interest for you okay let's start with uh, downloading and installing the software we need three main software packages apart from some regular software you probably already have on your computer we need um, three um, tools this is octave for machine learning this is uh, the simulation, model sim, and FPGA synthesis, quarters. You find Octave at the web address octave.org. Download, we use at the moment, uh, it's April 2024, Octave 9.1. Normally the versions um, don't differ too much from each other, so if you have a newer version or a slightly older version, that's also okay. We have Windows here and we download the installer. That takes a bit because it's uh, bigger software. Uh, in parallel, we have a look at Intel software. Um, you can go to Google and say Intel Quartus download. This is here Intel FPGA Software Download Center. Then we get Prime Light. This is the free software. FPGA development tool, Prime Light, the latest version for Windows. This is 23.1. Again, if you have a version that's a bit older or a bit newer, that's normally no problem because the improvements are mostly done for new FPGA types. We're using Cyclone FPGAs, which are on the market for quite some time. So it shouldn't be um, a problem to have another version because that software is quite stable. So download, we download the installer. Then we have to accept the license agreement. Download completed, let's install. Yes, we accept the license agreement. Don't need a desktop shortcut. All right. And this takes some time. I skip the processing a little bit to uh, save time on the video. Now the um, setup has been completed. We don't run it at this moment, we do this later. Now we install Quartus. And for that you need the administrator password. And after we typed that in, we come to this setup where we can select what we want to install. So what we need is Quartus Lite. We also install devices. Um, for this experiment, we use the Cyclone 4 but other experiments will use the Cyclone 10 and the Cyclone 5, so we install them. At this moment, we don't need the Max 10. And now we also use the Programmer. 
And here we also have uh, the quester. This is the simulator that has already been selected. All right. And then we can start that. Yes, we agree to the license. Download is completed. And now the software is installing all the different packages. And finally, installation is complete. Now we go to GitHub and download the source code for our machine learning application. Project name is NN RGB FPGA. Code download zip. And uh, what we also need are test images. And they are a little bit hidden here in the spiking and an RGB FPGA project. Normally you should uh, use your own images, but yeah, for this experiment, for this demonstration, uh, we take these images here. We have uh, 20 data. We download it. We have labels. download and we have an image for verification for simulation these images are in downloads and for our experiment here i use a directory with name demo 202404 we select them shift them over And then we unpack we can delete that and then we have here an nrgb fpga so we have here we don't need the license and the readme this is just from github we delete that to avoid confusion and uh, we also put the images in that directory. Okay. Next step is training of machine learning with Octave. We are in the project directory and um, we put our training data into the Octave directory. Then we go to Octave and what we want to implement here is uh, the machine learning with three categories. So two colors plus background, we invoke that. Here we have the source code and we need to adapt some things. First thing we need to adapt is the name of the training data. Our input picture is combi snap and the labels are combi label then we want in order to prepare, try something new we want to change other things here and um, this is the um, network that we generate in uh, the source code that we have, we have a network with seven hidden nodes. Let's do a change and change this to eight, have one more hidden node, just as an experiment. And again, to change something, we change the starting random number here, just to get another optimization. So we change this to 987654, just another random number. All right, we save this and then we run it. And this takes some time. In the command window, we see the output of our program. So the program has done reading of the data. 11% and 16% are the data for our two categories of colors we want to detect in the images. The rest is background. And now he's doing optimization. So we have 400 iterations and we are here at number 67, 68. 
Here you see the test image. So it shows a street scene with uh, yellow and uh, blue road signs. And the labels indicate that the training shall detect these yellow and blue road signs. After some time, training is completed and you see two windows. This one is the cost function, which decreases, rises a bit, and then after 400 iteration reaches a low value. Maybe after 200 or 250 iterations, this would also have been sufficient. This is something you can try out. And here another image, you see the result of the training and as comparing it uh, to the images of the test images, we see that indeed we have detected the different road signs. Look good. Now, last step is here that we need to generate um, the VHDL code. And this is done here with um, and, and generate VHDL. We start that command window and here we get now uh, config VHD. This is our VHD file, VHDL file with the parameters for the neural network. It is stored in our project directory config.vhd and here you see the values. So these are the values from our training. Connection 12 and 11 is the output of the neural network. We take this file and move it into our VHDL directory. FPGA generate, insert, yes, replace the old VHDL file. Because we used one more neuron, we also have to adapt our VHDL code. This is done in NNRGB. And here, connection 11 and 10. So this becomes number 12, number 12, number 11, and number 11. The next step in our design flow is simulation of the VHDL code. We are in the directory FPGA generate, but there are two things we need. We need the test bench, which is an FPGA plane, because normally you should do that before you uh, use the more complicated FPGA generate. So we copy that, control C, control V, and we need uh, the test image for simulation. And this is uh, the image we have here. So we put it into generate. And what we also need to do is to convert this um, into a readable format for the test bench. So we use Irfan view for that and we save it as PPM. ASCII encoding, save. And we see it's yeah, larger, it's much larger because this is a readable format for VHDL. This is the file we are using now. The name of our test image has to be written into the test bench. So here is the stimuli file name. This is A59. Snap and also the output we can call a 59 result. And now we are ready for simulation with ModelSim or Questa, as it is called in the Intel Quartos environment. Before we can start with simulation, we need a license. So license Questa Intel FPGA, First result here is in German, but then you can go to the software license. This is this one. And here you follow the instructions for getting the Questa license, the simulation license. You go to the self-service licensing center. 
here we are. I needed to log in and uh, I already have an account. Maybe you need to generate an account. Now we sign up for no cost licenses. So here you see I already got some licenses. Uh, this is the Quartus license. It's um, until July. So this is until 2025. This is OK. Next, um, this is my computer. That one here, maybe you have to create a new computer. Sorry, it's a bit complicated. Um, this is why I'm showing it here. I checked the uh, terms of use before. And sorry, I don't want to give feedback. So generate. And now I will get the license by email. I store the license file in the directory Intel FPGA Lite licenses. This is the file. And then you have to set environment variables. This is also described here on the web page. So uh, you can set the LM license file and um, you can set the MGLS license file. So here you have them. Um, sorry, that's in German. So these are the variables. Uh, LM license file, this is here the path. MGLS license file, this is here the license.dat. Okay, now we're ready for the simulation. Questor is started. And here we have our environment. Don't show this again. Close. And first we need to set up a project, new project. And we store that in the directory we created earlier. So demo and RGBA, FPGA generate. And here we are. And we call it an NRGB. OK. We want to add existing files. And we just add all the files. We have here all the VHDL files. OK. Uh, now we have to determine the compile order. So they are compiled from bottom up. Compile. Um, compile order. Auto generate. Let's hope that works. OK. Compile all. Yes, everything successful. So now we can simulate. Simulate. Start simulation. What do we want to simulate? We want to go to the work directory and simulate our test bench. This is sim and nrgb. OK. Simulation starts. And here we are in the main window. A lot of information here. These are the different instances we have. So this is our test bench, design and a verification, um, different processes here. Then we have variables here. These are the um, signals we can observe. And here we have our viewer. So what we do now is we go into the design and the verification. And we can select some values for observation. So we want to have the vertical sync, horizontal sync, data enable. These are the sync signals. And we want to observe red, green, blue input values. Uh, here are the output values. We don't have a look at them at the moment. Um, what we can do is um, Start the simulation now. This is done here. Run all. We can set this to hexadecimal. Now simulation is completed. We have a statement here in VHDL telling us uh, to stop simulation. We can have a look at the reports. So that looks OK. This is some conversion taking place here. Here is the wave file. We can zoom out a bit. 
and here we see our simulation values. So what we have here is this the start of the image. We have a sync signal telling us the start of the image. Then we have several lines of data. So this indicates the sync signal start of the line. And then this is one line for simulation. And here we see now the red, green, blue input values. So let's zoom in a bit. And here we see the different pixels. This is difficult to analyze. Um, we will have a look at that in a minute. What we can have a look at is uh, the resulting image. So in our simulation directory, we now have here this file, a59 result ppm. Let's have a look. And this looks great. This is the output from our neural network. And as you can see, it yes, it detected the blue and the yellow road signs. And um, this looks good. This is exactly what we expected. There is also something detected here. This is something we could optimize. But results show that our algorithm is working. For simulating the algorithm, this real-life test image is very well suited. However, if we want to have a detailed look into the behavior of the circuit, it's much easier to have simplified test data. So we have a look at the pixels we have here. Irfan view shows us the RGB values. We have gray. This is something like 80 or 90, 100. Then we have blue. This is 64, 110, 162 for RGB. And yellow, we have 122, 116, 54. With these color information, we now generate a test image. The test image is completely gray. We have a fact, zoom factor of 1000%. And in the first line, there is one blue pixel. So everything here is gray. There is one blue pixel. And there is one yeah, dark yellow pixel. And these are the RGB values we determine, determined earlier. If we look at the a PBM file, we see all the RGB values are 80, except this one blue pixel and this one dark yellow pixel. And now we can go back into simulation. So we change here pixel sim and pixel out. Back into Questa, we see the test bench has been changed. So we compile selected. And now we invoke the simulator again. We have to um, select a special option because we want to see internal signals. Normally, they are um, optimized out of the simulation. Um, we use this command line here to also simulate the internal signals. Here we are. We take red, green, blue. And now we want to see some internal values. So we go to the output neurons. This is one output neuron. And here we see inputs in. These are the values from the eight neurons in the hidden layer. And we add a divider. And then we see here the output of the first output neuron. And here we see the output of the second output neuron. Now we do the simulation. We don't do the complete simulation, just two microseconds to see the beginning of the frame. Here is the result of that. So we can zoom in. And now we see the values that we have given in our special test image. So let's put this to decimal. Here is 80. This is the gray value. Then 
here we see this is um, unsigned positive value. This is um, the blue pixel and this is the dark yellow pixel. You ho hopefully remember um, the values. And then with a little delay, with a little pipelining, we see the reaction of these nodes here and of the output. And this is difficult to see, so therefore we do something else. We take these values here and format analog. Now we do the same also for these two, format analog. And now we can see what's happening here. So this is our blue and this is our yellow pixel and we can see how the neurons react with a little delay to the blue and the yellow input pixel. So these give you certain reactions. These are the eight hidden neurons and then we have the two output neurons. So this neuron reacts to the blue pixel and this neuron reacts to the yellow pixel. So here you can really see the behavior of the internal neurons. And this is an option that is uh, available by simulation. When the simulation results are okay, we can now go to synthesis of the FPGA. So this is Quartus Prime, the light edition, the FPGA synthesis tool we installed earlier. The best way to start is file the new project wizard. Next, we select our working directory, which is uh, C, demo, and an RGB, FPGA generate. And then we have a name, NNRGB. We have an empty project. We add all the files in the directory, except uh, the simulation at the test bench. We don't need that. Then we select our design family. We have uh, several options. These are the ones we ins uh, installed earlier. We take the Cyclone 4 and our remote lab has this FPGA. Next, here we don't need to check anything, so finish. Now the project is generated and here we are. This is the top level and we can compile the design. There's one thing we have to do here and this is to ass assign the pins. Because this is something that is uh, forgotten sometimes, I will now give you an example what happens if you don't do that. So we now have the project here, we compile the design. And this takes a moment. Okay, everything is completed. And we have a look at the error messages. No exact pin locations for 63 pins. And this is a problem. We did not assign the pins. There are also some warnings. We um, have uh, a signal that is not used here, so this is all okay. But here the um, error message shows us no pin location. So therefore, assignment, import assignment, and we have in our FPGA generate here the pin assignments for the Cyclone 4. Open, OK. And now we have to do everything again because now we have certain constraints that have not been considered earlier. Here you see the hierarchy of our design. OK, that was successful. So no error message, only some warnings. That's OK. 
we see here the statistics, how much of the circuit has been used. So 8% of the logic, 51% of the memory, no multipliers, that's okay. We have to check the timing. So uh, for timing, we have a clock defined of 74 megahertz. And uh, the slow model, 85 degree is the most critical one. So we get 92 megahertz. This is okay. So no problems there in reaching the desired clock frequency. If we don't reach the clock frequency, we can go to synthesis. There we have different compiler settings to increase the performance, which might cost runtime for the tool or area of the FPGA. But we don't need that. We are finished with synthesis. So probably you are excited to try out the FPGA. You have the binary and with the binary of the FPGA, you can go to the remote lab and check if everything is working on real hardware. This is our homepage and here you get the access of the remote lab. If you are not registered, uh, you can get an account here, provide your information. Uh, for email, you can use an anonymous email. Uh, if, we, if you register, we are monitoring what you are doing in order to do scientific evaluation. I'm already registered here, so I log in. And now I can go to the Cyclone 4 experiment. I reserve it for five minutes and I can upload the binary. So this is the NNRGB FPGA generate output files. Here are the binaries. This is the one we just created. Open, upload and start experiment. And we select another input image. And this is already the result. So input image and we see look good. We can click on it exactly as we expected that to be. Another test here looks also very good. Yeah, the blue sky is also recognized as something blue. That's of course a limitation of this approach. If the sky is blue, you might detect it. Or what you can do is you can upload your own image. I have one here with a yellow truck from a company you might know. So this is a yellow truck on the road and what is happening, of course, it is detected as something yellow. So apparently just using the color is not good enough for detecting road signs. But um, here we see also something blue and I did not recognize that. So as a highlighter, um, this is quite nice. Yes, there is this uh, blue sign. So that was interesting to see. Also, you see the power consumption. So with 1.2 volt, you have a certain core current. You multiply that and you get um, the power that is required. Another image has slightly different uh, power requirements and you can compare that. If you are still watching the video, you are motivated and you are well prepared to now do your own experiments with the FPGA and the code that is provided. I wish you good luck and good experiments. Thanks for watching and take care.